Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about trigonometry of right triangles. So in this section, we're going to study certain ratios of the sides of a right triangle called trigonometric ratios. And we're also going to explore several applications from right triangle trigonometry. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use right triangles to evaluate trigonometric functions, how to find the function values for 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, or 90 degrees, or their equivalent in radians, which would be 0 radians, pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, pi over 3 radians, and pi over 2 radians. We're also going to use equal cofunctions of complementary angles, and we're also going to use the definitions of the trigonometric functions of any angle. So let's start by talking about trigonometric ratios. Recall that a triangle with a right angle and two acute angles, or in other words, two angles with less than 90 degree angles, is called a right triangle, and that the side opposite the right angle is called a hypotenuse. So let's say you have a right triangle with a right angle that's denoted with a little box in the corner. The side that's opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. And then if you have theta represent one of the acute angles in the right triangle, then the side that's opposite the angle theta is called the opposite side of the angle. And the side that is adjacent to it is called the adjacent side. So if you call this angle theta, then the side opposite it will be called the opposite side from now on and the side that's adjacent to theta will be called the adjacent side. Notice that the opposite side and the adjacent sides are relative to the angle theta. If we called the other angle theta, then the opposite side would be this side, and the adjacent side would be here. The six trigonometric ratios are defined as follows and are based on the angle theta, labeled in the previous right triangle. The symbols that are used to define the trigonometric ratios are called the six basic trigonometric functions. So the definition for trigonometric ratios, the trigonometric functions and their abbreviations are the sine function, which is abbreviated SIN, cosine function, which is abbreviated COS, the tangent function, which is abbreviated TAN, cosecant function, CSC, the secant function, abbreviated SEC, and the cotangent function, which is abbreviated COT. These are what's called the six basic trigonometric functions. And the trigonometric ratios are as follows. Sine of theta, so if we call this angle theta, then the sine of theta would be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine of the angle theta, so again, if we call this angle theta, the cosine of this angle theta would be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The tangent of theta is defined to be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Cosecant of theta is defined to be the reciprocal of the sine function, or in other words, it's the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine function, and it's defined to be the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. And the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent of theta, and it's defined to be adjacent divided by the opposite. So you find out the length of the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse, and you actually have these trigonometric ratios. And again, keep in mind that the opposite and the adjacent sides are defined in reference to one of the acute angles in the right triangle. If you change the angle theta to be the other acute angle, then you'll have the opposite and the adjacent side be reversed. The opposite side will now be the adjacent side, and the adjacent side will now be the opposite side. But the hypotenuse will always be across from the right angle. These six trigonometric ratios are different for the other acute angle since the opposite and the adjacent sides are reversed. And there's an easy way to remember these six trigonometric ratios. If you remember the acronym SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, SOHCAHTOA, you actually have the ratios for the sine function, the cosine function, and the tangent function. Sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So let's practice finding trigonometric ratios in example one. Find the six trigonometric ratios of the angle theta as given in the following right triangle. So our right triangle has this angle is represented as theta. The opposite side of theta is, has length two. The adjacent side to the angle theta has length square root five. And the hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle, has length three. So now we're gonna find out the six trigonometric ratios based on the angle theta. So the sine of theta, that is defined to be the opposite divided by hypotenuse. So that would be the opposite side has length two, the hypotenuse has length three, so sine of theta in terms of this triangle would be two thirds. Cosine of theta is defined to be the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse length. Well, the adjacent side to theta would be square root five and then divide by the hypotenuse length as three. So cosine of theta would be square root five divided by three. Tangent of theta is defined to be opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length. So the opposite side of theta would be two, so that would be a two in the numerator for tangent of theta, and the denominator would be adjacent side, that would be length square root five. So you have two divided by square root five, and if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom of the fraction by square root of five, you find out that tangent of theta is two times square root five in the numerator, divided by positive five and the denominator. Now let's find the other three trigonometric ratios. You have cosecant of theta, that is the reciprocal of the sine function, which would be hypotenuse length divided by opposite length. So cosecant of theta would be three for the hypotenuse, 
divided by 2 for the opposite side, so it's 3 halves. Secant of theta is defined to be the reciprocal of the cosine function of theta, which would be hypotenuse length divided by the adjacent side length. So hypotenuse was length 3, the adjacent side was length squared 5, so the secant of theta would be 3 divided by square root of 5. And again, if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root of 5 divided by square root of 5, you find out that the fraction of secant of theta would be 3 square root of 5 divided by 5. And then cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent function. So cotangent of theta was defined to be the adjacent side length divided by the opposite side's length. So the adjacent side to theta was square root of 5, so it's square root of 5 in the numerator. And the opposite side was length 2, so that's the denominator. So cotangent of theta is square root of 5 divided by 2. So now let's try example two, finding trigonometric ratios again. If cosine of theta is three fourths, then sketch the right triangle and determine the remaining five trigonometric ratios in terms of the angle theta. So again, if cosine of theta is defined to be the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse in terms of right triangles, then we can draw our triangle as follows. You have the angle theta, we'll just label it in the bottom left corner for this acute angle, and the side that's adjacent would be three because that's the numerator for the cosine function of theta, and the hypotenuse is length four. So that's the side that's opposite the right angle, has length 4. And so the side that's opposite the side of theta, we don't know. We need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out the length of this side that's opposite of theta. So remember, the Pythagorean theorem is used for right triangles. It says if you take the length of one side squared, so we'll call that side A, and you take the other side length squared, so we'll call that side B, so that'll be A squared plus B squared, it must be equal to the length of the hypotenuse squared. So you have A squared plus B squared equals C squared for the Pythagorean theorem. We'll say 3 is A, so we have 3 squared, plus we'll call this side B, so it'll be B squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So that'll be 4 squared. So 3 squared plus B squared equals 4 squared, or 9 plus B squared equals 16. And if you solve this resulting equation for B, you'll have B squared equals 7. And if you take the square root on both sides of the equation, remember the plus or minus, because you're taking a square root to cancel out a square power, you have B is equal to plus or minus square root of 7. Since we're talking about the length of this side of the triangle, so B will be the positive square root of 7. So that's the side that's opposite the angle theta. So now that we know all three sides of this right triangle, we can actually find out the remaining five trigonometric ratios. Remember that cosine was 3 fourths. That was given to us. That's the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And now we can find out sine of theta. Sine of theta was the opposite side, which we know now is square root of 7, divided by the hypotenuse, which was 4. So it would be square root of 7 divided by 4 for the sine of theta. Tangent of theta was defined to be the opposite divided by adjacent. So tangent theta would be square root of 7, that would be that side's length, divided by the adjacent side's length, which was 3. So tangent of theta will be square root of 7 divided by 3. Cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of the sine function. So notice that sine was square root of 7 divided by 4. So cosecant of theta will be 4 divided by square root of 7, or hypotenuse divided by the opposite side's length. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root of 7 divided by square root of 7, you'll find out that it's also 4 times square root of 7 divided by 7 for the cosecant of theta. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine function. Well, cosine function was already given to us as 3 fourths. So the reciprocal for secant would be 4 thirds, or it will be the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side's length. And then cotangent of theta, cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent function of theta. So cotangent of theta will be 3 divided by square root 7, or adjacent divided by the opposite side's length. So it will be 3 divided by square root 7. And again, if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root 7 divided by square root 7, you'll have 3 square root 7 divided by 7. That's the cotangent of theta. So if we're given one of the trigonometric ratios, we actually can construct the right triangle that we actually have using Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. And then we can find the other five trigonometric ratios pretty easily. So now let's talk about special triangles and calculators. There are special trigonometric ratios that can be calculated from certain triangles called special triangles. And we're going to use a scientific or graphing calculator to find these trigonometric ratios. Certain right triangles have ratios that can be calculated easily using the Pythagorean theorem. So the first triangle that we're going to obtain is from drawing a diagonal in a square with size of length 1. So let's say you have a square, each of the sides have length 1, and we're going to draw a diagonal from one corner to the opposite corner. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what is the length of this diagonal. Well, notice you have a right triangle that's formed. So you have a right triangle from the corner of the square. And if you have the opposite side is the diagonal now, then we're going to find out what is the length of the hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the length of the hypotenuse. So a is the length of one of the sides, and b is the length of the other side. So if you take the length of one side, which was the length of the square, so 1 squared, plus the other side squared of the triangle, so you have 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which will be c squared. And so now you can find out what is c. So you have c squared is equal to 1 plus 1, which will give you 2, 
And if you take the square root on both sides to cancel out the square power, so remove the plus or minus, you have c is equal to plus or minus square root of 2. Well, c can't be a negative value because we're talking about length of a hypotenuse. So c must be the positive square root of 2. And so now we have the length of the hypotenuse or the length of the diagonal, it's square root of 2. So this triangle that has a hypotenuse of square root of 2, where the other two sides have length 1 each, this is what's called a 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle, or a 45, 45, 90 triangle. To obtain a second special triangle, we're going to begin with an equilateral triangle. That means a triangle where all the sides have the same length. And we're going to say that the equilateral triangle has each side length 2. We're going to construct a perpendicular bisector through one of the vertices to the opposite side. So what that means is that you're going to cut the angle in half of one of the angles formed inside the triangle. So let's say we have a perpendicular bisector through the point B. So B is a vertex of the triangle. We construct a perpendicular bisector. So that means you cut the angle B in half and you drop it to the opposite side. And we'll call the point where the perpendicular bisector intersects the opposite side, we'll call that point D of this triangle ABC. Then we can again use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the perpendicular bisector or the height or altitude of the right triangle. So notice you have another right triangle here that's on the left side of this equilateral triangle. So if the sides are all length 2 for the original triangle, that means this hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle, has length 2. Well, if you also have a perpendicular bisector from geometry, you know that the perpendicular bisector will intersect the opposite side and cut that side in half. So that means if this was a length 2 triangle originally, the length of this line segment, AD, will be length 1. So you have a triangle that has a right angle, that opposite the right angle is length 2, you have length 1 for this side, and we're going to find out what is the height of the triangle or the altitude's length if we can use a Pythagorean theorem. So we'll call one side A, we'll call the other side that's missing B, and the hypotenuse we know is C. So Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That would mean 1 squared plus B squared is equal to 2 squared. So 1 squared plus B squared equals 2 squared. And if you solve this equation for B, you'll have B squared plus 1 is equal to 4. Subtract 1 on both sides of the equation so that b squared is equal to 3. Take the square root on both sides of the equation to cancel out the square power. Remember the plus or minus. So you have b is equal to plus or minus square root of 3. And since b is the height of the triangle or the altitude of the triangle, the b cannot be a negative value. So, so b is the positive square root of 3. Now this special triangle also has a name. It's called a 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree triangle or a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Notice that the angles that we have. If you have an equilateral triangle, all the sides are the same length, but you also know it's all the interior angles are equal as well. And they're all 60 degrees because the sum of all the angles in a triangle must equal 180 degrees. So each of these angles must be 60 degrees originally. Well, if we cut this angle in half, so now you have a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. So that's why it's called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the length of the sides of this triangle would be, it'll be square root 3 for the length of this side, 1 for the length of the side AD, and the hypotenuse has length 2. So we're going to summarize the values of these six trigonometric functions obtained from these two special triangles. So the theorem, special values of the trigonometric functions. The following values of the trigonometric functions are obtained from these two special triangles, the 45-45-90 triangle and a 30-60-90 triangle. So let's start with the 45-45-90 degree triangle first. So you have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. The sides were length 1 each, and the hypotenuse was square root 2 length. So now you can find out the six trigonometric ratios from this triangle. So let's find out. What is sine of 45 degrees? It doesn't matter which 45 degree you look at, it'll be the same ratio regardless. So sine of 45 degrees, it would be opposite divided by hypotenuse. So that'd be 1 divided by square root 2 for the trigonometric ratio. And if you rationalize the denominator, you'll have square root 2 divided by 2. That's the sine of 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees, cosine was adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So that would be 1 divided by square root 2 again. So you have 1 divided by square root 2. That's the trigonometric ratio for cosine of 45 degrees. Or if you rationalize the denominator, you'll have square root 2 divided by 2 again. So sine of 45 degrees and cosine of 45 degrees are the same value. It's square root 2 divided by 2. And then tangent of 45 degrees, this was opposite divided by adjacent was the ratio for tangent. So tangent of 45 degrees would be opposite divided by adjacent. That'd be 1 divided by 1, which gives you 1. So tangent of 45 degrees is 1. Now you can find the other three trigonometric ratios the same way. Cosecant of 45 degrees is the reciprocal of the sine function. Or in other words, it's the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side's length. So you have square root 2 divided by 1. So cosecant of 45 degrees will be square root 2. Secant was the reciprocal of cosine. So secant of 45 degrees will be the reciprocal of cosine of 45 degrees. 
or you can also find it by taking the hypotenuse and divide by the adjacent side's length, which will be square root 2 divided by 1, so square root of 2 is the value of the sequent of 45 degrees. And cotangent of 45 degrees, cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent function. So cotangent of 45 degrees will be the reciprocal of tangent of 45 degrees. And so tangent was 1, cotangent will also be 1, because it would be adjacent divided by the opposite, which will be 1 divided by 1, or 1. So now let's talk about the 30, 60, 90 triangle. There are two different angles that we have here. We have a 30 degree angle and also a 60 degree angle. Let's find out the 30 degree angle trigonometric ratios first. So if you have a 30 degree angle, sine of 30 degrees would be opposite would be 1 divided by hypotenuse, which is 2. So sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Cosine of 30 degrees, if you have 30 degrees, the adjacent side would be square root 3 and the hypotenuse would be 2. So cosine of 30 degrees would be square root 3 divided by 2. Tangent of 30 degrees would be opposite divided by the adjacent. So that would be 1 divided by square root 3. So tangent of 30 degrees would be, if you rationalize the denominator, would be square root 3 divided by 3. Cosecant of 30 degrees is the reciprocal of the sine of 30 degrees. So if sine was 1 half, cosecant of 30 degrees will be the reciprocal, or 2, because that would be hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. Secant of 30 degrees is the reciprocal of cosine of 30 degrees. So if cosine is square root 3 divided by 2, secant of 30 degrees will be 2 divided by square root 3, the reciprocal. And if you rationalize the denominator, you'll get 2 squared 3 divided by 3 will be secant of 30 degrees. Or you can also find it by taking the hypotenuse and dividing by the adjacent side. So hypotenuse was 2, and the adjacent side for 30 degrees would be squared 3. And then cotangent of 30 degrees. Well, cotangent of 30 degrees is the reciprocal of tangent of 30 degrees. Tangent of 30 degrees was 1 divided by squared 3. So cotangent of 30 degrees will be squared 3 divided by 1, which is just squared 3. Or you can also find it by taking the adjacent side and divided by the opposite side of 30 degrees. So adjacent side was square root 3 divided by the opposite side, which would be 1. So square root 3 is equal to cotangent of 30 degrees. So now let's talk about the 60 degree angle. So if you have 60 degrees, the opposite side is now square root 3 and the adjacent side is now 1. So now notice that cosine of 60 degrees would be adjacent side, which is, which is 1, divided by hypotenuse, which is 2. So cosine of 60 degrees is equal to sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 60 degrees, from 60 degrees, it would be opposite, which is square root 3, divided by 2, which was also cosine of 30 degrees. So sine of 60 degrees is equal to cosine of 30 degrees. Cotangent of 60 degrees, so if you want to find out what is cotangent of 60 degrees, you have adjacent, which is 1, divided by the opposite side, which is square root 3. So your cotangent would be square root 3 divided by 3 if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by square root 3 divided by square root 3. And so cotangent of 60 degrees is equal to tangent of 30 degrees. Secant of 60 degrees, so if you look at 60 degrees, secant would be hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. So that would be 2 divided by 1. So secant of 60 degrees is equal to 2, or that's also was equal to cosecant of 30 degrees. Cosecant of 60 degrees, if you have 60 degrees, cosecant would be hypotenuse, which is 2, divided by the opposite side, which is square root 3. So cosecant of 60 degrees would be 2 divided by square root 3, or if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by square root 3 divided by square root 3, cosecant of 60 degrees will be 2 square root 3 divided by 3, which was also equal to secant of 30 degrees. And then also, if you have tangent of 60 degrees, if you have 60 degrees, tangent would be opposite divided by adjacent. So tangent of 60 degrees would be square root 3 divided by 1, which was equal to cotangent of 30 degrees. So one thing to notice about the trigonometric ratios between 30 degrees and 60 degrees is that the co-functions of complementary angles are equal. Sine and cosine are co-functions of one another. Secant and cosecant are co-functions of one another. And tangent and cotangent are co-functions of one another. And complementary angles means that the two angles, if you add them together, gives you a 90 degree angle. So 30 and 60, if you add them together, you get 90 degrees. So the co-functions are equal of the complementary angles. Sine of 30 is equal to cosine of 60. Cosine of 30 is sine of 60. Tangent of 30 is cotangent of 60. Cotangent of 30 is equal to tangent of 60. Cosecant of 30 is equal to secant of 60, and secant of 30 is equal to cosecant of 60, all in terms of degrees. So this table summarizes all the calculations from the trigonometric ratios we have from these two special triangles, 45-45-90 triangle and also a 30-60-90 triangle. So you have the degrees in the first column, 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And you also have the equivalent in radians, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2 radians for each of these angles that are in degrees. And then the values of the six trigonometric ratios are in the table. Notice that some of the trigonometric ratios are undefined. So if you have 0 degrees, cosecant of theta and cotangent of theta are undefined. So there are no values for those. And also at 90 degrees, notice that tangent of theta and secant of theta are also undefined.
So from this previous table, you must know these values of the six trigonometric ratios for the angles obtained from the special triangles, 45, 45, 90 triangle and the 30, 60, 90 triangle, since it's the basis of studying trigonometry involving the unit circle approach. So if we're going to find values of trigonometric ratios for other angles, we're going to need either a scientific or graphing calculator to evaluate the sine function, the cosine function, and the tangent function. The other three trigonometric ratios for cosecant, secant, and cotangent can actually be found by using the reciprocal trigonometric identities. Remember, the cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of the sine function. That means cosecant of theta is 1 divided by sine of theta. Secant of theta and cosine of theta are reciprocals of one another. So secant of theta is 1 divided by cosine of theta. And cotangent of theta is reciprocal of tangent of theta. So that means cotangent of theta is equal to 1 divided by tangent of theta. So one thing to keep in mind when you're using a graphing calculator or scientific calculator to evaluate the trigonometric ratios is that you have the sine, cosine, and tangent built into any scientific or graphing calculator. However, if you want to evaluate cosecant, secant, and cotangent, you cannot use the inverse trig functions. So cosecant of theta is not to be confused with inverse sine, secant of theta is not to be confused with inverse cosine, and cotangent is not to be confused with inverse tangent. Inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent are inverse trigonometric functions. Cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. To actually have those evaluated, you need to use these reciprocal trigonometric identities. One other thing to keep in mind is that when you're using a calculator to find the approximate value, you need to make sure that you're in the correct mode. If you're trying to find the value of sine of one radian, it's not going to be the same value as sine of one degree, because the angle measure is very important when you evaluate trigonometric functions. You need to make sure that you're in the correct mode, whether you're in radian mode, if your angle is in radian measure, or you're in degree mode if your angle's in degree measure. So we're going to go through the following steps to actually change the mode, whether we're going to go from radian mode or in degree mode. So the first thing that you're going to do is find out what mode is your calculator currently set in. So you need to go to mode by pressing the mode button on your graphing calculator. So notice on the fourth line down, you have radian and also degree. These are the two different angle measurements that we talked about in the previous video. If your angle that's going to be input into a trigonometric function is in radians, you leave your mode in radians. However, if your angle is in degrees, you need to convert to degrees in your mode. So scroll over to degrees and press enter to now change your calculator into be in degree mode. And if you want to change back to radians, scroll back to the left and hit enter on radians. If you want to evaluate one radian, make sure that you're in radian mode. And now you can press sine of one, close parentheses on the sine function. So this will evaluate what is sine of one radian. It's approximately 0.841 when you round rounded three decimal places. However, let's say you want to evaluate sine of one degree. Well, then you need to change your mode to degree mode. So scroll down and hit enter on degrees. And now go back to your home screen. And now if you evaluate sine of one, now that is sine of one degree. And this is approximately 0.017 if you round rounded three decimal places. So it's very important that you're in the correct mode, whether you want to evaluate in terms of radians or you want to evaluate in terms of degrees for your trigonometric function. As you can notice, the answers are very different based on what mode you're in, whether you're in degrees or in radians. If you want to evaluate the cosecant function, you need to reuse the reciprocal identity for sine. Cosecant was equal to one divided by the sine function. So cosecant of one degree would be one divided by sine of one degree. Make sure you're in degree mode when you actually type this in. So one divided by sine of one would be cosecant of one degree, which is approximately 57.299 if you round three decimal places. And again, this is not to be confused with the value of the inverse sine function. If you want the inverse sine function, you would press second inverse sine of one. It's a completely different value. Notice that the inverse sine of one is equal to 90, not 57.299 when you round to three decimal places. So the inverse sine function is not to be confused with cosecant of the angle. So secant of theta is one divided by cosine of theta using the reciprocal identity for secant. It's not to be confused with the inverse cosine function. And same thing for cotangent of theta. It's one divided by tangent of theta. It's not to be confused with the inverse tangent function. So let's finish up this video with example three. Using a calculator, find the following trigonometric ratios using either a scientific or graphing calculator. Round your answers to three decimal places. So number one, we're going to evaluate tangent of 40 degrees. So the first thing to do is make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So press mode. Make sure that you're in degree mode for your calculator because we're going to input a 40 degree angle into the tangent function. So if you want to evaluate tangent of 40 degrees, the tangent is actually programmed into your calculator. So tangent of 40, 
close the parentheses on the tangent function, and tangent of 40 degrees is approximately 0.839 rounded to three decimal places. Number two, let's evaluate cosine of 20 degrees. So again, we're already in degree mode. If we want to evaluate cosine of 20 degrees, we have cosine programmed into a scientific or graphing calculator. So cosine of 20 degrees is approximately 0.94 when you round to three decimal places. Number three, let's evaluate cotangent of 1.73. Notice that this is not 1.73 degrees because there's no degree symbol on 1.73. This is 1.73 radians. So we need to change the mode on our calculator to radian mode. So go to mode. Scroll down to radians, and now press enter so that you're in radian mode now. So now go back to the home screen, second quit. And now if you want to evaluate cotangent, it's the reciprocal of the tangent function. So it's one divided by tangent of 1.73 radians is approximately negative 0.161 when you round to three decimal places. And then number four, if you want to evaluate cosecant of 80, it's not 80 degrees because there's no degree symbol on the 80. This is 80 radians. So cosecant of 80 radians would be Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So it would be 1 divided by sine of 80 radians. So 1 divided by sine of 80 radians is approximately negative 1.006 if you round to three decimal places. So this is a good place to stop our video. Now we talked about how to use right triangles to evaluate trigonometric functions, how to find the function values for 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, and their equivalent in terms of radians, 0 radians, pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, pi over 3 radians, and pi over 2 radians. We also use equal co-functions of complementary angles, and we also use the definitions of trigonometric functions of any angle. If you have any questions about any examples of this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about applications of trigonometry of right triangles.